He is risen. Amen. So it's wonderful to be with you, with you this morning on this special Resurrection Day, this special Easter Sunday, and uh, so looking forward to worshiping with you. Just a few announcements, if you notice in your bulletin, uh, the, um, we'll have a lot of things coming up in April, um, including Food Link, uh, Ladies Tea on April 20th, Teen Challenge, which I always love, will be here on April 21st, and also on April 21st, you have a new members class. Just a word of note about the new members class, there's, there's no obligation to, to join the church uh, if you're just curious as to uh, what the church is like and that type of thing, and uh, feel free to come to that. Uh, also, if that time does not work with you, feel free to let me know and I can reschedule that um, for, for even just you. Um, so, um, but very excited about that opportunity as well. Um, and uh, so a lot of things we have going on in the life of our church and including uh, Kids Quest, which meets at local parks uh, in the area, weather permitting. And this Sunday, I'm sorry, this Saturday, we'll be at uh, Hickory Park at 2 o'clock. And if you um, are interested in that, helping out, or interested in, and, uh, in bringing your children or grandchildren or some, some uh, kids that you know, uh, feel free to let me know in my... Um, Email and phone number is, is on the back. And also, again, it's weather permitting. Um, it's been a little cold lately. Uh, so we'll, we'll see uh, how it goes, uh, praying for good weather on Saturday. Uh, and hopefully we'll be at Hickory Park. Um, but just uh, in the upcoming spring and summer, though, we'll, we'll do that a lot in local parks and just an effort to, to carry the gospel uh, out in our community. So uh, just be in prayer for that. So with that in mind, let's bow our hearts and minds in prayer. Let's pray. And the Father, just uh, thank you so much for this wonderful Resurrection Day in which we are celebrate um, uh, your Son, our Savior, uh, Christ, and his, uh, how he died for us and then rose again and ascended into heaven where he seeds for us right now. And so, Lord, we just praise and we thank you so much for uh, this wonderful time that we have uh, in celebrating you and celebrating the wonderful gospel and celebrating the resurrection of, of your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. In Christ's name we pray, amen. If you're able to, please stand for opening scripture, which is from Psalm 16. Psalm 16, verses 9 and 10. Hear now the word of God. Therefore, my heart is glad, my whole being rejoices, my feast also dwells secure, for you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. Let's lift our voices together as we worship the Lord.
So at the end of the month, what we do as a church family is that we look back upon the past sermons uh, that we have looked at, the past scriptures that we looked at, in preparation for uh, the coming week, uh, which will be our time of communion. And it's just a time where we reflect upon scripture, and uh, as Christians, as believers, uh, we, especially me, I'm not perfect. I, there are times that I sin every day. I'm still a child of God, um, but at the same time, I go to scripture and it convicts me and it brings me back to the cross over and over again. And so there's times in which uh, God has used scripture throughout the month to show me my sin, show me the things that I need to work on in his child. And one of those things that uh, was, was this week, uh, this past month, uh, was t- taken from Exodus chapter 20, uh, verse 7. Uh, which says, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord God will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, this is one of the commandments that we've been studying, and it is um, a dear commandment that we should all heed, um, that we, uh, even as believers, uh, should understand, and that um, we are called to... uh, in no form or fashion attribute to you any falsehood, um, anything that is not revealed in Scripture. And uh, we, every time that we think of the name of Jesus, every time that we talk about Christ, uh, our, na- our hearts and our minds should come back to, to, to you, Lord, as you revealed in Scripture. And um, uh, even as we go about and, and talk about uh, Jesus with other people. Um, we pray, Lord, that our actions would reflect our words. And sometimes that's not the case. And so, Lord, we come to you this morning. It's not to confess those times in which, very sadly, in our, in our lives and our actions, we have taken your name in vain. Christ in me pray. Amen. Hear now words of assurance uh, from Zechariah 9.9. It speaks about Jesus. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this scripture Uh, is a prophecy about our Savior, Jesus Christ, as he is uh, coming into Jerusalem. And it just reminds us um, of what your Son, our Savior, came to do for us. And so on this special day, as we uh, celebrate not only the life and death, but especially the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we're reminded of, of who he is for us, our Savior, And despite all our sins, despite the times in which uh, we have taken your name in vain, that sin has been paid for if we are truly yours. And so, Lord, as your Christians, as your your children, Lord, we pray that we understand this truth and we take heart in it and it affects every step along the way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, just having just confessed our sins before you and acknowledge our sin, acknowledge even as your children that uh, there are times that we mess up terribly. Uh, we sin against you. And yet, we proclaim your gospel at the same time. Lord, we just saying about a hope that we have in you. And that is something that is very difficult at times to hold on to, we must admit. In this world, in this life, in our culture, that's surrounded by hopelessness. But the word hope is seen in, in biblical terms, Lord, is, is such an amazing thing that, that we need to grasp hold of. It's an absolute sure conviction that something wonderful has happened and will happen. And Lord, this is a wonderful song that we just sang about how you are a, our hope in this life and in the next when we pass away. And so, Lord, we just come to you this morning and just ask you that these eternal truths just walk through us throughout our lives, that we reflect upon it consistently, constantly, especially this special Resurrection Day, special Easter Sunday, but every single Sunday and every single day, we reflect upon the hope that you've given us. And even as we come and we pray for those that we've been praying for continually, constantly, Lord, uh, we lift them up again in our prayers, Lord, and um, ask you that, uh, as just as we sang about this hope, that they too would have uh, this hope as well uh, throughout some, through, through incredible difficulties, and Lord, we just uh, give you praises uh, for, uh, for, for Gary and continue to lift up June Han in prayers. And, and also thank you, Lord, that Fred Frazier is doing better. Um, and also our, our hearts and our minds uh, continue to go out to Paula and Mike, uh, special, special people that we have come to know and love and that we cherish. And we just lift them up in our prayers and ask you for uh, continued health for them uh, to stay strong and a miraculous healing uh, for, for Paula. And just be with Mike as well um, as they labor together in your name as, as they struggle, Lord, uh, throughout all the difficulties of life. And Lord, there are so many also unspoken prayer requests that we have, things that we don't even know how to put into words, how to write down on paper, how to tell them to other people. But Lord, you know our hearts, you know our struggles, our cares, our worries. And so, Lord, we lift things, these things up to you and ask you, Lord, that um, you watch over them. And Lord, having come to you with all our struggles, our cares, our worries, um, reminded, though, this morning of the special Easter about the resurrection of Christ, and in this verse really shows us what this means. From 1 Corinthians 4, chapter 15, verse 20, but in fact Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who've fallen asleep. And so this chapter is a wonderful chapter that speaks about the hope that we just sang about, um, that our faith is not in vain, but there's an absolute assurance that, Lord Jesus, that you were risen from the dead. And so it gives us hope as in a hopeless world. And so we pray, Lord, as a church family, that we grasp hold of this wonderful fact and it changes our lives and it changes our approach to people and it changes our words, it changes our actions. So we might be salt and light in our community. We might share the wonderful good news of the gospel with everybody that surrounds us. We might tell others of this wonderful hope that they might have if they but turn to you. And so, Lord, as a church family, we come to you and we praise and we thank you for this. And we pray this Lord's Prayer, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debtors 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Continue our worship in reading responsively uh, from uh, the, it's your pew Bible, and it's from Colossians chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 17. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. I will read the light print, and together you read the dark print. Hear now the word of God. If then you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Put to, de- put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. Do not lie to one another seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meanness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against one another, forgiving each other, as the Lord forgave you, so you must also forgive. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns, spiritual psalms, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Amen. The chair will come forth for the children's sermon. So, <laughs> okay. All right, so how are you today? Good. Good. All right, so what is today? Easter. Easter, Easter Sunday. What is, what, what's, what's about Easter? What is it? Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Yeah. Jesus rose from the dead, right? And so um, today, though, y- yes? Well, we celebrate, actually, him rising from the dead. Remember, we, we remember when we went to Good Friday, we came to Good Friday, we celebrated, we celebrated him dying for us. Uh, and today, though, we're celebrating him rising from the dead. That's why and, uh, why? Why? Well, because if otherwise, then we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to go to heaven, right? Mm-hmm. And so, uh, in fact, that's what we'll talk today about. Uh, in the sermon, and we'll talk about about um, all of this. And there's a really interesting story we'll talk about when Jesus appeared to to some of his disciples. Um, it wasn't the typical when we say disciples. It wasn't part of uh, the normal disciples, but but they well actually they didn't even recognize him. They didn't recognize him, which is really interesting. And, um, and so there they are, they're talking with him. And what Jesus does, though, is he says some things very interesting. And he takes them back through the scriptures and shows them all throughout the Old Testament uh, how all of this pointed towards him. And they didn't realize that it was him until they went into their home 
and he broke bread with them and the very and then they realized oh it's Jesus and then you know what he disappeared but before that though is a really amazing thing that he did and that he um, shared about how everything in the Old Testament really pointed towards really pointed towards him and so um, and so this is the book that we use for kids quest right it's called the Jesus storybook Bible and I really like this is because everything um, throughout it points towards Jesus and it shows um, as your age about uh, the fact that all the stories of the Bible point towards Jesus and that's really 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 important and even like for instance at the very beginning it talks about uh, this yeah and so it talks about about how the serpent came to Adam and Eve and um, tempted Eve with the fruit right and um, gave the fruit to, to, to Adam and it was just very very sad um, and about how God cast them out of, of the garden now it says the end but then it says something really neat though and let me read to you this it says but not in this story God loved his children so much to let the story in to, to not let the story end there even though he knew he would suffer God had a plan a magnificent dream one day he would get his children back one day he would make the world their perfect home again and one day he would wipe away every tear from their eyes you see no matter what in spite of everything God would love his children with a never stopping never giving up unbreaking always and forever love and then they would forget him and run from him deep in their hearts God's children would miss him always and long for him lost children yearning for their home before they left the garden God whispered a promise to Adam and Eve it will not always be so I will come to rescue you and when I do I'm going to do battle against the snake I'll get rid of the sin and the dark and the dark and the sadness you let in here I'm coming back for you and he would one day God himself would come now listen that's not exactly what he said of course because he actually talks about the seed of the woman will crush Satan's head the serpent's head and that seed of the woman was what we're so who we're celebrating today who were celebrating it Jesus that see the woman pointed towards Jesus and that's that's the first really mention of Jesus in the in the Bible and then all throughout the Bible um, it, it talks about and everything like the Old Testament sacrifices pointed towards Jesus and everything and so when Jesus is talking with these people and they don't even realize who he is he was explaining to them through the Old Testament how all of this pointed towards himself and pointed towards his death and it pointed towards his resurrection as well pointed towards him coming back to life and so it was a really neat neat time for them to have, to have heard um, and so and eventually they, they realized who he was and it wasn't though until they they got the bread until he broke bread with them and was very intimate there was oh wait this whole time we've been talking to Jesus when he's risen from the dead um, but before that though was the really interesting thing in which he went through all all of this Old Testament and he showed them it was about a seven mile walk and it was a walk you know I mean we say seven miles we take a car but it was a walk and for seven miles it was a long walk and so it was a long time in which he he was able to listen it was a long time in which he was able to communicate to them about how all of the Bible that they knew pointed towards himself yes yes Me too. all right so but what's interesting this listen, listen what's interesting about the seven mile walk is that they learned from the Bible the whole time right they were talking about the Bible the whole time and how it all pointed towards Jesus and so it's just a lesson for us to really really talk about the Bible and to study the Bible and learn from the Bible okay uh, it's a lesson for me and it's a lesson for you guys as well all right so let me pray
Heavenly Father, just thank you, Lord, for these little ones. And just pray, Lord, that as they grow up, they continue to lean upon you and uh, just learn to put their faith and trust in you, Lord Jesus. And they just come to know and understand uh, their need for salvation and their need to, to study the, your, your word uh, and how it all points towards you, Lord Jesus. In Christ in me pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. stand if you're able. Thank you, Kristen, Marty, 
um, and John, I should say uh, Kristen, John, and Sweetie. Um, if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24, and uh, start a reading with verse 13. Um, we, for the sunrise service, we, we read from um, Luke um, 24, uh, 1 through 12. And, um, and it was just a, a time in which, of course, we see that first times in which we see um, Christ uh, talk, or talk about him rising from the dead. And uh, this is a, is a very interesting passage. It's my first time to ever preach from this passage, um, and, uh, but it's, it's a very touching passage, but also a passage that really, this past week, has really made me think. So again, uh, 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 24, starting at verse 13. Hear now the word of God. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each, with each other about all these things that, that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. Then one of them, named, named, named Cleopas, answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? Now, again, just <laughs> the irony of, of that statement, of that question, is just mind-boggling. Uh, here Jesus is. It's a very humorous scene. Um, and are you the only visitor to Jerusalem? You don't know what's going to be going on? Um, and Jesus said to them, he said to them, what things? Now, I want you to, to read this and capture, see if you can capture what's missing here. Because uh, there's a lot of things that he says, which is true, but what's exactly missing? Um, and they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And how our chief, chief priests and rulers delivered them to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all that is how the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they had not, did not find his body, they all came back saying that they, not seen of, that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them and all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So, so they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if, as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he taught to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they arose the same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them the breaking of the bread. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this morning, um, we just come to you, Lord, and just uh, we bring the scripture to you and ask you, Lord, that you would show us what you would have us to know in this text that we might apply it to our lives, that we might understand it, and that we might seek to do your will and share others that the wonderful hope that we have found. 
In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So I want you to look at verse 32. Look at verse 32. And there's something that they say after they, of course, had finally recognized Christ and for who he is. And uh, then he disappears. And they look at each other. And this is most likely a husband and wife. Uh, we see from uh, John chapter 19, a verse there that talks about Cleopas and his wife. And so this may have been his wife. And they look at each other. Um, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Now, isn't that a question for you and I? Don't you want that to happen on a fairly regular basis, that, that your heart burn within you to show you Jesus Christ? and him crucified, and him risen from the dead, and that, that when you speak about Christ and you think about Jesus, your heart is overwhelmed with joy. But let's be honest. We have a lot of things in this world that sort of sometimes difficult drowning things out, like a train, okay? And the back of the, or you name it, in our culture, Okay? Um, things that, that go on in our lives, things that go on within our culture that makes it really, really difficult for that to happen. Makes it extremely hard. And, and, and I mean, especially in our culture in our day and age in which so much of our culture seems to be going against what Scripture teaches even some of our politicians, and again, you know me, I don't get political, but at the same time, also see scripture and speak the truth, but some politicians, in fact, a lot of politicians, maybe even most politicians, will say things against what scripture actually teaches. And you see it on the TV, the radio, uh, you name it, uh, culture, I mean, just there you go, everywhere you go, and it's, let's be honest, it's not easy having that same fire within us as it may have seemed 5, 10 years, 15, 20 years ago. I mean, you look at the culture itself and how interested some, many people are interested in Christianity. Eh. And it's what you often get. And it can creep up within our own lives. And it makes it difficult for us, for our hearts to burn within us, ourselves. And, and yet, so here Jesus is, and he appears to these two people. Again, I think most likely a husband and wife. And I don't know about you, but if it were me, I'd be like, hey, here I am. I'm risen from the dead. But he doesn't do that. In his wisdom, he doesn't do that. Instead, he's interested in a conversation with them. And he asks them questions. He gets them thinking. And the first thing that he, that he goes towards is he goes... He explains to them when they just they don't they don't get it. Now, now what what was left out when they, in their response? What was left out principally was that Jesus rose from the dead. I mean, he would talk about that, and there's scriptures that clearly seem to indicate that the Messiah would rise from the dead. And he looks at them. And a lot of commentators will say, maybe a better translation might be say, oh, clueless ones, you're just clueless. I mean, have you ever just like happened upon a scripture and you just can't get it? And that's apparently what these people just, Cleopas and the other person just couldn't get. And then what he does is he engages their minds. He, he does something and he goes back throughout all of the Old Testament and he shows them how it all points towards himself. 
he shows them how it all points towards himself. And he shows them that the ultimate fulfillment of all of the Old Testament is himself, and especially him risen from the dead. And so what's interesting, though, is when they say, did not our hearts burn within us? Again, they didn't recognize him. It's almost along the same way that you and I might encounter Christ when the scriptures point to that, right? Is that it points to Jesus Christ dying for us and rising from the dead. And so if you want your heart to burn within you for Christ, on a consistent basis, even throughout the difficulties that come in this culture and this life, the first thing that you have to do is you have to engage your mind and understand that. Yes, it, Christianity is one of the heart, but it's also one of the mind as well. And he uses, I mean, this is a, about a seven mile, we don't know when, he appeared to them on the road, but he appeared to them, and it was about a seven-mile stretch, a seven-mile Bible study. And I'm sure they weren't hurrying along the way, but he talked with them. And wouldn't you just like to have, have heard this conversation for seven miles just to hear oh, oh wow, so this, this pointed towards Jesus, and this pointed towards you, Jesus, and this pointed towards you. And again, it's easy on this side of the cross, and we have, we have so, like, thousands of years of church history that have gone before and have studied the scriptures and have said, have gone through these and, and understood how much all this points towards Christ. But understanding that is really, really important. And again, it's, it's engaging the mind and understanding that. And you and I... Our hearts and our, we will never burn within us the way we want to unless we engage the mind, unless we study the scriptures. And look, if this morning, if you're not a Christian, if you're not a believer, understand that this book was divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit. He used men to write it, but yes, he uses it in such a way so that there's no major contradiction. And it all amazingly pointed towards who? Jesus Christ. And it pointed towards his life, and it pointed towards his death, and it pointed towards his resurrection. And so it's something that you and I are called to study, to dive deep within, to have this intellectual understanding of. And of course, there's the heart of it as well, right? Because they didn't recognize him until he did what? He broke bread with them. And again, they keep it, picture the scene because they invited him to, a, to into his home, apparently a husband and wife, and they're just sitting at the table and have an interesting conversation. And he breaks the he blesses the meal and breaks the bread, and suddenly their eyes. <gasps> It's Jesus. Why? Because what they had learned along the road pointed them intellectually. Again, they were talking about their hearts burning within them. Right? And hearing the verses of Scripture and pointing towards Jesus, and yet they didn't recognize him. But there's an intimacy here, though, as well that intellectually brings along it with the heart. Understanding that verses 26 and 27 comes before verses 32. Okay? That's important to note. In other words, the intellectual grasp of who Jesus is and their hearts were burning as they heard about Jesus not so much 
being in his presence because they didn't recognize who he is, but hearing the scriptures about him. And their hearts burned within them. They longed for more and more of Jesus. And so there's this understanding of who Jesus is through the scriptures. And they saw that. And then they longed for him. And then they saw him breaking bread and there was this intimacy. And then, of course, he disappeared. Now, again, if you're not a Christian, if you're not a believer this morning, understand that all of this points towards Jesus. And him coming and dying and for you. Rising from the dead for you. So please, please, turn towards him. Let your heart burn for your Savior. For a Savior that has paid for your sins, if you but turn to him. But for us as Christians, for us as believers, it's this grasping hold of the resurrected Christ as seen not only oftentimes the New Testament, but the Old Testament as well. And it's this intimacy that we can have just as much as he was sitting at the table with us. Again, we celebrate communion once a month. It's a time where we do that. But even so, we can do that on a regular basis wherever we are as his children. I absolutely love the book of Hebrews, and we've been studying that uh, for our men's Bible study, uh, Sunrisers, uh, it's in your bulletin, uh, Thursday morning at 6 a.m. Uh, through Zoom or uh, in person, alternates, but it's, it's a great time. It's a wonderful time uh, whenever I'm able to make it. I wasn't able to make it this past week, but whenever I'm able to, I absolutely love it, and it's digging down deep and understanding the intimacy of who Jesus is. And every time I study that book or any other book, I look at it, I study it with my mind, and it engages my heart as well. And I see Christ for who he is, and my heart burns within me, and I long to know him more. And the more I know him, the more I want to know him more. over and over and over again. And that is important because, again, within our culture, we are in a day and age in which it is difficult for our hearts to burn for Jesus. It's not easy. And so the answer, loved ones, is to get this understanding of who Jesus is through his word. And through it, we have it touch our hearts as well. And that's exactly what Hebrews shows us, is there's this intimacy as God intercedes for us on a consistent, constant basis. Pleading his own blood on behalf for us as our great high priest. It's steadily beautiful. And, and every time I grasp hold of it and I understand it, I want more. I want more. Again, you, if you've heard me preach, you know me, you know I'm, I'm not the perfect person. I don't proclaim myself to be. I'm a sinner just like you. But don't you want your heart to burn for Jesus? I know I do. And there are times it's not easy. But I hope and my prayer for us all is that we would see the resurrected Christ in Scripture. That we would see it, reflect upon it consistently, constantly. And he shows us his grace and his mercy. And more and more we see it, the more our hearts yearn for him. Our hearts burn for him. And as a result, we're his witnesses, sharing the love of Christ. With the world that so desperately needs Jesus. Telling about him. Telling him what they mean, what he means to us. Of how the scriptures point towards him. And how he beat death itself and rose from the dead. And 
all of that we go through is not in vain. But he is right there with us every step of the way. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this morning, Lord Jesus, we just praise and we thank you for your scriptures. And they were able to, to see Jesus Christ and him crucified for us. And they were able to apply it to our lives. They were able to rest upon your grace and your mercy. May our hearts burn within us. May we study the scriptures consistently, constantly, intellectually, and we see how all this points towards you, Lord Jesus, and how it affects every step along our ways. So that in a culture that is largely departed from you, we might rejoice in what your Son, our Savior, has done for us. As our hearts burn within us for you, may we be bold in our witness and share Jesus Christ dying for our sins, sinners like us, but risen from the dead and giving us hope in this life of a hopeless world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Receive now the benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, to present you blameless before the presence of his glory, the great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forevermore. Amen.